So good to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. The time now is 845. A deadly tornado that tore across North Dakota over the summer has been upgraded now to an EF5 with winds topping 200 miles per hour. Think about that. Meteorologist Cody Matz is here to explain the reason behind the change and why it took so long and, and then where we go from here. Good morning, Cody. Indeed, good morning. It's the strongest classification for tornadoes and now the first confirmed in the U.S. in a dozen years. The June 20th twister killed three people traveling on the ground for roughly 12 miles and grew to be nearly a mile wide. Now, the tornado hit Enderlin, North Dakota and surrounding areas roughly 50 miles southwest of Fargo. Meteorologists from the National Weather Service office in Grand Forks now estimate the tornado's winds reached at least 210 miles an hour. Now, determining a tornado strength can take days or weeks as meteorologists study the damage to everything the twister hits. Now, in this case, it took much longer because of the applied physical applications needed to understand the extensive damage to a freight train and more specifically to the individual rail cars themselves, one of which was picked up and hurled several hundred feet. Cutting edge research published last year was developed by meteorologists from the Canadian Severe Storms Laboratory and the Northern Tornado Project, providing the scientific foundation for the final rating. This study identifies the wind speed it takes to pick up and move large objects such as the 286,000 pound train cars that were airborne as the tornado passed by. It's this new research that's now being accepted by scientific entities like the National Weather Service that directly led to the upgrade in scale. Now, since the National Weather Service began using the enhanced Fujita scale in 2007, there have been just 10 tornadoes categorized as EF5. Earlier tornadoes were assessed using the older version of the EF scale, which was updated because of new understanding of modern engineering. The last tornado to receive an EF5 rating was back in May of 2013 in Moore, Oklahoma, a southern suburb of Oklahoma City. Now, the 12-year uh, gap between top of the scale ratings is the uh, longest since the agency started keeping records in 1950. However, this new research becoming accepted science makes it possible that other strong tornadoes that occurred between 2013 and today could also get that upgrade, which could include the Greenfield, Iowa tornado from last year. This goes to show that there's likely been other EF5s, but just remember that this is a damage scale and a tornado actually has to hit something to create damage and it has to be a very specific type of uh, scale. It has to be a very strong building to kind of get that classification sure. or EF5. So if a tornado drops in a cornfield, it can only be rated so high. I mean, it could have, this is hypothetical, it could have 7,000 mile an hour winds, sure. but we would know, would know because, you know, a cornfield will drop at a certain speed. Right. So Did you get a, a, a rail car <laughs> and blow it 400 feet 400 in the air? plus feet in the air, wow. 286,000 pounds. Think about the force to do that. That takes a lot of force. And so it takes all these application sciences and the ground new re, uh, groundbreaking research to identify, oh, yeah, here's the exact speed it would take to do that. Now we know. Well, it's good we know, right? It's good we know. Yeah. And that's why I'm sure there will be scientists over the next couple of years going back to do additional research. And this may be the first of many.